Well, welcome to Weekly Wisdom. I've got one question for you today as we reflect on Proverbs. And here's the question. If you have kids, do you really love your children? If you have grandkids, do you really love your grandkids? If you're an aunt or an uncle, do you really love your nieces and your nephews? Listen to this one little verse from Proverbs chapter 19, verse 18. Discipline your children, for in that there is hope. Do not be a willing partner to their death. You go, whoa, that's a, again, we've been walking through Proverbs for a long time. I hope it's striking you that, that as the Holy Spirit inspired these words, as they were gathered together, they are so powerful. They have such a punch. Listen to that one more time. Discipline your children, for in that there is hope. Do not be a willing partner or a willing party to their death. A couple thoughts. Here's one. Discipline is expected and good. Discipline is actually a gift. If you're, if you're a loving parent, if you're a loving grandparent, aunt, or uncle, now if you're a grandparent, aunt, or uncle, you don't get to discipline in the same way because you're not in charge. Uh, but but uh, there's something about discipline that is a gift. I've been meditating on this passage from Hebrews for the last two or three months, and I'll read you just a little part of it. Uh, in Hebrews chapter 12, we read these words in the second part of verse 7. For what children are not disciplined by their father? If you are not disciplined and everyone undergoes discipline, then you are not legitimate, not true sons and daughters at all. Now this passage is actually talking about God, our Heavenly Father who loves us, and because He loves us, He doesn't let us get away with stupid things that will eventually kill us. And, and so, so the first thought is just to understand that discipline, when it's done right, when it's measured, we're not talking about abuse, we're not talking about cruelty, but discipline, whether it's the timeout chair, whether it's taking away a privilege, whatever, you know, whatever your method is, if you love your kids, if you love your grandkids, your nieces and nephews, you won't let them run so wild that they run off a cliff. And then, then the passage says that actually loving discipline is a source of hope. There's hope in discipline. And when I think about my upbringing, my parents, um, they, had a, they both had full-time jobs and they had another full-time job disciplining me. I was a wild kid. And yet they loved me. I, I, they must have loved me a lot because they disciplined me a lot. And I, and I needed it. I really did. I don't look back and say they were mean. I look back and say that they loved me. And then it's interesting at the end of the passage, it says, do not be a willing party or partner to their death. It can cost your children their life if you don't love them enough to discipline them. It could cost your grandkids or your nieces and nephews, those younger family members. It can cost them more than you know if you remain silent when you see something that needs to be you know, addressed and spoken to, when something needs to happen to help them know that they're loved enough that you'll, that you'll kind of stand in the way of their destruction. Uh, years ago, when our three boys were quite young, our oldest son, Zach, was learning to ride a bike. And I taught him to ride the bike in the church parking lot. We lived in a parsonage. That's a, a old-fashioned word for a house that's right next to a church, owned by the church, but the pastor gets to use it and live in it. And so we lived in the parsonage. I taught him to ride his bike in the parking lot of the church. And he was getting good enough to where he could kind of ride on his own a little bit. But we lived right in the corner of a busy street. And I just said to him, Zach, just never go down our driveway and out into the street. You know, go this way into the church parking lot. And even the church parking lot, there's cars there, but they drive slower. But the street was a pretty major street. And one day, I'm walking out of the garage. I see him on his bike going straight down the driveway and straight into the street. And had a carbon coming either way, he could have been killed. And so I just ignored it and told him I loved him and moved on. No, I disciplined him. If you ever get a chance to ask my son about that, he could probably share the story with you. I disciplined him firmly. It's none of your business how I disciplined him, but I'm an old school kind of guy. You figure it out. But, but I disciplined him and he never did it again. And that could have saved his life. So here's the encouragement. If you're put in a place where you have leadership over somebody, especially kids, love them enough to discipline them with kindness, with grace, with clarity, Talk it through with them. Let them know why you're disciplining them and bring life and hope through that loving discipline. Will you pray with me? Living God, you love us enough to discipline us. Help us love the next generation, especially if we have kids or grandkids, nieces and nephews. Help us love them enough to bring great correction, kind words that are clear, that speak the truth, and bring them hope and protect their lives through the loving discipline of people you put in their lives. We pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Hey, God bless you. Have a great day. And if you're part of a local church somewhere, join them for worship this Sunday. If you're part of Shoreline Church, we'll see you online or on campus. God bless you. Have a great day.